ride-sharing. You've probably taken an Uber or Lyft before. The ride-sharing industry has completely disrupted the taxi industry and is constantly innovating, making it one of the most innovative industries on this planet. But what if I told you there's a darker side to the rideshare industry? Uber, Lyft, and other rideshare companies love to attract potential rideshare drivers by using the slogan, be your own boss. But it simply isn't true. More than the majority of rideshare drivers don't even make a minimum wage. And all of them don't get a say in how much they charge other passengers, how many hours they work, and even some of the most basic principles a boss should be able to do. The problem is, is that because these platforms are owned by one central organization, they're the ones that make the decisions for the whole platform. Usually companies like Uber and Lyft, they wanna keep prices as low as possible so they can compete with the taxi market. Because of this, rideshare drivers are severely impacted because they make less money. The fact that most rideshare drivers have an additional job just so they can get to minimum wage is astonishing. Because the central organization controls what they can and cannot do, rideshare drivers don't have a voice. See, the problem is, is that it isn't just affecting rideshare drivers. It's also affecting the connection between rideshare drivers and rideshare passengers. I'm sure you've probably seen on news articles and all that of rideshare drivers and rideshare passengers having conflicts like, a, like assault and a lot of other more criminal and dangerous things. The reason why is because there's a lack of transparency between the rideshare driver and the rideshare passenger. Let's use an example. Let's say you, you order an Uber. All the rideshare drivers in your area get a notification about who you are, a photo of you maybe, or your rating. You also receive that for your rideshare driver. You receive their rating, their photo, and the model and license plate of their car. The problem with this is that you don't get to see their the passenger's history or the rideshare driver's history, which is critical in identifying potential conflicts between a rideshare passenger and a driver. For example, let's say a rideshare driver is known for assaulting their passengers. If we saw the pa if we saw the passenger history from before that, we'd be able to identify that this rideshare driver is a threat and warn the passenger. This way we could completely resolve the conflict before it even happens. On top of all of that, the users of the platform don't even have a say in what happens in the community. The central organization like Uber or Lyft get to control what happens, how much the passengers pay, how much the rideshare drivers get paid, and so much more than that. This leaves the users of the platform without a voice, and we've seen countless numerous times in the past where a lot of these users have protested. A really good example of this is how Uber, when Uber got banned in Austin, Texas, because of specifically this. The main source of all of these problems is the fact that there's a central figure. Because Uber or Lyft are controlling how much rideshare drivers get paid or the transparency between passengers and drivers, the platform users don't even get to regulate the problems themselves, which causes even more problems. The only way these problems will ever be solved is if we decentralize ridesharing. So you might be asking, how do we decentralize ridesharing? Let me introduce you to blockchain technology. Blockchain is simply a decentralized distributed network. Now, what this means is that there is no central figure that controls the network. And there also has to be numerous points of failure in this network for the network to be fully breached. This makes it one of the most secure things in the universe. Blockchain is simply a decentralized distributed network. Now, what this means is that there is no central figure that controls the network, and there has to be numerous points of failure for the network to be completely taken over. Now, what this means in a decentralized ride-sharing perspective, this means that the ride-share users have control over the network. There is no central figure like Uber or Lyft that controls what these users do. The community gets to vote democratically, meaning that the majority vote wins. Because blockchain is such a secure network, the, this ride-sharing platform also becomes even more secure. Let's say a hacker or anyone wants to breach this network. Well, they have to take control over at least 51% of the users, which is the majority, to have control over the, ne the network. This is extremely difficult because they have to do this all at the same time before the network realizes and they, complete, they start shutting down. It's extremely difficult and it takes a lot of effort and money and time to breach a blockchain network, which is why it hasn't been done as frequently as a centralized network. The crazy thing about this is that this can be applied today. I created my own decentralized ride-sharing platform. Now, this might 
it seem as something very hard, but a decentralized ride sharing platform is actually really easy. One of the main things you really need is something called a smart contract. Think about this like a contract signed between two different people. And every single condition in this contract has to be followed or else this contract breaks through. Now, this smart contract is applied between the rideshare passenger and the rideshare driver. Now, th this smart contract basically states that the passenger pays the money as long as that passenger arrives to their destination. The rideshare driver receives payment as soon as they transport the passenger to their desired location. Additionally, in this smart contract, the rideshare driver and the rideshare passenger know all the history between both of them. For example, what other rideshare drivers did the passenger get transported by, and the same thing for the rideshare driver. Another reason why this is such a viable solution is the fact that the users of the platform get to dictate what they want with this platform. Now what this means is, let's say rideshare drivers don't feel like they're getting paid enough. Well, the whole community, meaning the rideshare drivers and the rideshare passengers, have a vote where they ask, should the rideshare drivers make more money? And then after that, the votes are counted and the majority vote is the one that wins. So let's say more than 50% of the people believe that the rideshare drivers uh, should get paid more. Now this decision is going to be taken because it's the majority. This is pure democracy because there is no central government and it's the community getting to dictate what happens. This solves a problem where rideshare drivers don't feel like they're getting paid enough and it also solves the problem where the users of the platform don't feel like they're having a voice. As long as there's a central figure in any sort of platform like a ride sharing platform, there's always going to be problems. The reason why is because this central authority might have different intentions than the people that use the platform. Blockchain is a solution for that. Blockchain ensures that the power is given back to the community or the people. This is what makes blockchain a pure version of democracy. The crazy thing is, is that this isn't all blockchain can do. Blockchain can do so much more though. I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Those are all applications of blockchain. From real estate to insurance to even government elections, blockchain is completely taking over the world. And I can't wait to see what blockchain is going to do in the future.